As Jews, what is our obligation to the memory of those who suffered in the Holocaust? What are our responsibilities to ourselves, to our community, to the Jewish people, and the world? When I think of Rose Galbar, I think of blonde, short hair that was curled at the end, blue eyes that were full of water, thin skin that was light. Her voice seemed delicate. She was wearing a gray dress and she was very beautiful. She was holding a purse full of pictures. When I think of Rose Galbar, I think of a very smart woman who knew exactly what to say and she was able to say it in a way as if we were experiencing it all with her. You heard the emotion in her voice. Meeting Rose and Art Galbert, we heard their stories firsthand and we felt the emotions in their voice and we connected to their stories. They taught us many life lessons that we will take throughout our lives. From Rose, we learned about love and family and how to never give up. From the Holocaust. From art, we learned about finishing today and continuing our lives no matter how hard it is. Through our interviews with Rose and Arthur Gelbart, we learned the important lesson of living in the present. We also learned that it is important to share these stories so they are never forgotten. It's the Jewish people's history and it's our history. Not taking people for granted is an important lesson and their survivors lost their families and they had to live every day and not look back. When I interviewed Arthur Galbart, I think of how nicely he was dressed. He was wearing a suit and carried himself as someone highly respected. He wasn't a very tall man, maybe 5 foot 3. He was wearing a pin on his suit, although I don't know what it was of. He said he had done this before and answered the questions like it was a childhood nursery rhyme he could repeat word for word. When I interviewed Arthur Galbart, I realized how proud he was of his family. He was married to his wife some 50 odd years. He is very proud of his children and what they have accomplished in life. The interview was emotional, happy when speaking of the present, reminiscent and sad when speaking of the past. When he started crying while talking about his parents, I could sense his pain. I was born in Leszno, Poland. Um, the town was close to Poznań. And uh, shortly after we moved to Kalisz. Uh, my father and mother were entrepreneurs and they decided to open up a shoe manufacturing uh, business. My uh, mother was born in Sheratz to an Orthodox family. And um, my father couldn't, when he married my grandmother, my, uh, they um, moved to Varta, a very little town wherever my grandfather could get work. He was like a bookkeeper uh, uh, because of his beautiful handwriting and he knew uh, math. So he would go to the various jobs where they needed a bookkeeper, like in a forest uh, uh, um, lumber yards. And uh, my grandmother was more orthodox. And every Shabbat, he would come home wherever he was in neighboring cities just to make a living. And they had my two, my mother and my two aunts were And born. my uncle was born in Varta, where uh, they moved later on. There was uh, such a little town. Half of it was uh, uh, <laughs> the... Uh, about 50% were Jewish and 50% were non-Jews. When the war started, I was 10 years old, and I was at home with a very large family. We were a very happy, big family. We all lived within walking distance of everybody. It's a small town. My mother was very much into getting for us an education. You have to remember it was a a small town, not much available. So we, she hired somebody privately to come into the house. We were, I had three sisters and myself. And we all were trying to catch up on what we didn't uh, get in school for the education. And we had a very nice life. Not very wealthy, but we lived very well. We were a very happy family. We didn't know too much of luxury. 
but we were very close there. They had grandparents and uh, I, very good life really. It was not. Uh, and then it kind of slowed down. It all became where we took my father, had to go to work, which he didn't like very much because nobody cared for the Germans. Like I said, I was only 10 years old and, and we were running away in the beginning to go away when the Germans were coming in. And my father sent the three of, three of us away to a friend's house and he, they were going to catch up to us, but it was didn't last very long because the Germans caught up with us and passed us. So we couldn't do anything but the three of us, my older sister and my younger sister and myself, decided to go back home. So we started walking back home. We were not allowed to walk at night, so we walked as much as we could and stayed on the, on the side of the road at night until we came home. And when we came home, we found out, uh, you want me to speak about the Holocaust, right? The part of, yeah. That one of my uncles was shot the first day when the Germans came in. They just kind of set an example to the town to show their, their power. So when we, when we walked into the house, my parents were, my, were very, very happy that we came. But it was like very sad because my uncle that was shot had three children and his wife were in our house. They didn't want to stay at their home. So this is where we stayed for quite a while until we started, they started taking us to work and not the children, but they took my, the, my father. Because don't look at the past. You look at what's ahead of you. And you, and you, so you try to, uh, again, I, I never use an alarm clock. You wake up, you're, you're, I really love getting up in the morning and, and doing things. And when my kids come to town, we just two weeks ago went to a wedding of my, one of my nieces into Tampa, Florida, when all 40 of us were there. That is what I appreciate. Family. Have I still didn't know anything of my sisters or anybody. My mother or father survived. We didn't know anything of that. But my friends that were shipped out from that camp, somehow when when the camps were liberated, had a car. They they took a car or stole a car, or whatever, and they came into camp and they looked for people they knew and they found me. So I went with them and left in Buchenwald to start looking for family. So we would go to a city and put, on a, they would have a, a like a, a board that you could hang up. Uh, I am here, Arthur Gelbart, I'm alive and I'm looking for family. So if somebody else came in and recognized the name, this is how we found each other. And that was going on for quite a long time because nobody knew what was happening. And, and we went, we drove and we went all over Germany. We went into the English zone, British zone. We went to the French zone. And then one day I went to, uh, when we lived in a city in Bayreuth, one day I walk out the street and I, I was I was a kid, you know, I was, I was 16 years old, but I never went through childhood, really. We were, the years between 10 and 16, those are valuable life years. And I saw my sister walking down the street. She found out that I was there and she came. And then uh, she took me and we went to my other sisters. 
And we were there in Germany for a while and we drove around all over the place looking for more people. But there was no, there was no hope. There was no hope. We found out that my mother was shot right in the ghetto. And my father died in Auschwitz. So, we stayed there for quite a while. We are so thankful for this experience to meet with them and to hear from them what they had to go through. We are never going to forget the Holocaust and we will continue to remember, teach and learn.